That's why I'm glad we're doing this series. You know, that's what we're talking about is how can we derive meaning from, you know, strings and, and wood and magnets and, and metal. Uh, you know, and when you put it all together, it's like a conduit between you and the truth. Um, it only puts out what you put in. And there's a, there's a beauty in that. There's a beauty in that perfectly balanced relationship. Okay, welcome everybody to the first installment of our new YouTube series, my new YouTube series, uh, Booker T and My Guitars. And in, and in this series, uh, I want to share with you some of the guitars that I own and give you the history of some of them. This is the first one that I'm holding now. It is a Martin M38 that I have had, I guess, for nearly 40 years. I got it in 1977, so it was one of the first ones that they made. And it was uh, a gift to me by a beautiful man uh, who has left us, but his name was Stephen Bruton, and he was the guitar player for Chris Christopherson, who was then my brother-in-law. And Stephen decided that I should be playing acoustic guitar and that I did my the instruments I had weren't good enough so he went to New York and went to Sam Ash music and picked this out for me and brought it to me in Malibu and it was probably one of the nicest gifts anyone has ever given me of course I sent him a check for it and he he accepted the money it, because it's not a cheap guitar you could probably get one of these uh, on uh reverb for maybe about $3,000, $3,500. But uh, I want you to see this one. It's one of the first ones. It's a, it's a gem. The workmanship is just, just um, unbelievable. And of course, the, uh, the inspiration for this, as I was talking with my son earlier, was from the Spanish uh, acoustic guitars that influenced me so much. I, I, I love to hear him play. His name was Andres Segovia, and of course he was the uh, main influence for the Chicago guitarist Curtis Mayfield, um, whom I copied. And so here it is. It's a gorgeous instrument. I think every time I visit, you see it missing from the hanger on the wall. <laughs> yeah, but fortunately, you haven't taken it out of the house yet. <laughs> well, Teddy, you, you, can, uh, you can help educate me and the viewers about guitars, although I love them. I don't know the, I don't know the mechanics of guitars. This one fits my hand very well. But this has been hanging on the wall now for a year. But what about this part of the guitar? Of the, this is the part that, that feels comfortable to me. It's not too big. And on so many guitars, it's so big I can't actually play. Uh, I can't play. Yeah, I think you like the guitar because it's a low profile neck. Um, I think the fingerboard is ebony. Um, the frets are spaced nicely, but not too far apart. I think the whole, I think there's 20 frets. Uh, it's an M38, I'll have to look that up. And um, I think it's got a rosewood back and solid spruce top. And it's just a great sounding oh, really? guitar. Um, it kind of has a, a classical Spanish uh, sound. And you made a chip over there. Did you hear people play that you enjoyed? Yeah, uh, Jordan and I spent a summer in Spain and we saw this flamenco show. And man, it was a privilege just to hear somebody with a true mastery of the instrument, you know? It was um, pretty mesmerizing the way they were playing and just watching this guy be in complete sync with you the- You saw a show outside or at a theater or where? Oh, sorry, yeah, I was at a theater in Seville, um, an old teatro in Seville. Um, and just watching this guitarist be in complete sync with the rhythm of the dancer's feet and it made the hairs on the back of my neck stand up. I mean, he was completely Incredible. Um, everyone should see a flamenco show <laughs> in Seville, Spain. I'm telling you. I'll never forget that night. Thank you. Okay, everybody. Well, you're watching Booker T TV on YouTube. And this is 
the first series, uh, the guitar series. And this is my son, Ted, that I'm talking to. He's the director and also the guitar player in my band. And I just want to take a, a minute and thank the people that have helped me get this, uh, this show together. Uh, my producer, Olivia Jones, who is also my manager and daughter, and our camera woman, the beautiful Nan Jones, who's standing behind the camera. And uh, I, I, I know that this is uh, invasive, but I would like for you, if you can, if you enjoy this series and want to keep it up, please, uh, there's a like button down on the bottom left and a subscribe button down there or down on the right. Please hit those and I will continue to make uh, TV videos about my guitars and about my equipment. Okay. Sorry about that. All right, Dad, for the record, how many guitars do you own? Well, uh, officially I have, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, the missus is telling me that I have 14 guitars. So that's going to be the official number. So that's how many installments are going to be in this series because each one of them, I have been so fortunate to have such guitars. Uh, each one of them would merit a... Uh, a probably a 30-minute video, uh, especially the ones that have been given to me and the ones that have been made or custom-made for me, uh, like this one. And uh, the sentiment behind this guitar really comes through with it. Uh, you know, Stephen was a loving fellow. I'm talking about Stephen Bruton from, uh, and he played beautiful guitar. You can hear him play on Chris Christopherson's records. And he played all the acoustic and the band and all the electric. And uh, he was just a great friend. Uh, and that's why I'm holding this. And, and then once I got this, so, uh, music just started, music just comes to you when you're holding an instrument like this. And so would you say that this Martin is your favorite out of all the guitars you own? I think for uh, Spanish-influenced music, and I love to play all different kinds of music, uh, folk music. Strumming, I think this is, a, this is my favorite, yes. It just feels good to me, it feels close to my chest and it feels well, I hold it tight. And this is the first time it's ever been recorded, not on an album, just in any capacity, Yes, this right? is the first time it's been recorded, period. And uh, I wanted to do a series, Teddy, if you are, are with us, on microphones. Um, it's being recorded right now. This, this is a Lewitt M440. This is a good microphone. If, anyone, if any of you are watching are thinking of putting a studio together and you don't have a lot of money, this is a good microphone for overall use, this Lewitt M M440. It's, it's dynamic. It doesn't require power supply. You can use it for so many different uses. You could record an amplifier with it, and you can just throw it in your studio and turn it on and then start recording. Uh, but I have had, in my, uh, in my, fortunately in my lifetime, some very good microphones, some of which I still do. For instance, my RCA 77D, which I still have, and I didn't give it away. But normally you would be recording an instrument of this quality with a condenser microphone, maybe even two condenser microphones, one on top, facing this way and another on the bottom facing this way because so much sound is being created when you play this instrument. But condenser microphones are expensive. You, you, you can you can get uh, some, some, some good knockoffs. But that is a series that I'd love to do, uh, Teddy, if you're up for it, is uh, on microphones. Yeah, it's funny. I don't think a lot of people know about your guitar playing and, and just how well you play. It's always been a dream of mine to just put you in a room with two mics a guitar and your voice and to just cut a whole album. I really, really, really appreciate you mentioning that, Ted, uh, because I've loved music since I was a toddler. I heard my mom play Chopin on Rachmaninoff on piano. And the first time I got my hands on a musical instrument, it was a ukulele. And uh, that just was a feeling I'll never forget. And, uh, and I, I, I've never been known as a guitar player, but it's always been an instrument that's been close to my heart. And, uh, 
I play so differently when I have a guitar or rather than a keyboard. It's playing nicely. Uh, and the other thing I want to mention is um, that you've turned me on to, uh, and I would like to have maybe a third uh, Booker T TV series on um, audio and audio workstations. I am now on my sixth or seventh audio workstation, thanks to you, Digital Audio work Workstation. And, and this one is Logic. I started with Studio Vision, and I went from Studio Vision to uh, 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 Reason, and, uh, and I, I went from there to uh, Pro Tools, and then I went to Ableton Live. But now I am on uh, Logic Pro 10 which is an Apple uh, application, and it is just awesome. They have just done such an awesome job with it. Uh, and I'm recording this on a, on a Logic project. And, uh, and if you can bring the camera over here, Apple, uh, uh, Apple has made Logic compatible with practically everything that you might want to use. My console here is a DigiDesign S3. Can you see that? This is a wonderful board. Uh, this is a board that it's not just a console, it's a controller, it's an interface. You can hook it up to your computer and record through it. And it has so many tracks. I think it has about 64 tracks. And um, it, just follows, uh, it just follows the projects. And it makes it so you don't have to always have the mouse in your hand. It's a screen maybe a long way away, looking away from you. You don't have to try to find a little, uh, a little part with your mouse. You, can, you have uh, faders here and buttons and knobs. And it's so much uh, more to have this tactile surface, easier to have a tactile surface to work with when you're mixing. And it works so well with Logic. It works, of course, with Pro Tools. And, and people tell me that it works well with, um, with uh, Cubase and other other digital audio workstations. And then I have my Novation um, con um, controller here, uh, which also works just really well with Logic. But um, I, I'm, I'm uh, thank you. It took me a while to get it together, but it is, it, I'm so happy with it. And uh, of course, the sound is so wonderful recording right now at 48K. So we could have a series about uh, digital audio workstations and how people might integrate them to get started in music. Uh, because these recording studios can be very expensive, and, uh, but you can do it at home. You can do it at home. And, uh, Or you can make a you can make a symphony, or you can make a series a series of albums. Okay, so uh, my director is signaling that uh, we have come to the end of our time here. But thank you everyone for joining us. Oh, she wants me to sing something. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness.
You know, my very first guitar, Teddy, was a Sears Silvertone. I don't know if I have it. I probably got thrown into the trash. Uh, my, my wife is shaking her head. Obviously, it's got thrown out. But that was the one I played on, the William Bell's I Forgot to Be Your Lover. So, all guitars have potential. Yeah, yeah. Steve Cropper played the telecom uh, caster, and I never knew him really to play anything else. Uh, so the cool thing about this guitar is um, it has Lindy Freeland pickups, which are voiced kind of like humbuckers, so they're a little thicker than single coils. And I have um, a little on-off switch that engages and disengages a treble bleed, you know, which retains the high-end content as you roll down um, the volume on your guitar. So this has uh, a Fender Elite Telecaster neck, which has an ebony fretboard. I just bought the neck. Uh, a black Carina body um, that I bought separately. Callahan Bridge. I have Stratocaster knobs and a tip just for aesthetics. I've always liked the numbers on the Strat knobs so that I can see what I'm doing. Um, and it's just a hell of an instrument. I use it on all of our shows and since it's been put together, it does everything I need it to do. I think the beauty of a Telecaster is you and the truth, right? There's there's no complicated switching to get in the way. It's a brighter guitar. There's no hiding. And who wouldn't want something that doesn't obstruct uh, the notes and doesn't obstruct what you're trying to say? Uh, you know, you want to play the guitar. You don't want it to play you. Uh, and that's the beauty of a Telecaster. Plus, if you're in your bind, you can, you can use it as a weapon. <laughs> That's why I'm glad we're doing this series. You know, that's what we're talking about is instruments and how can we derive meaning from, you know, strings and, and wood and magnets and, and metal. Uh, you know, and when you put it all together, it's like a conduit between you and the truth. Um, it only puts out what you put in. And there's a, there's a beauty in that. There's a beauty in that perfectly balanced relationship. You know, um, it's like a mirror in a way, and it never lets you down. And so over time, I think you really can develop a love for something that is essentially just wood and magnets and, and metal because, um, you know, all, all meaning is given by us, by humans, in my opinion. Um, and so after a while, you develop a bond with something that is simple, but but it's yours. I have memories of Stevie. Now I have memories of Stevie Way Vaughn. His brother Jimmy and I have been in touch. Uh, and Stevie and I were only in touch when he wanted to play music, but we, we did get on stage a couple of times together. And uh, Stevie asked me to join his band uh, not long after I'd formed Booker T and the MGs. And I told him I couldn't because I had my own band, and he just he, he, he didn't understand that. He didn't understand that. He was so dedicated to music, Stevie was, and a, such an inspirational person to play with. Um, so that's, I think that's one of the reasons I love this song so much. He's such a virtuoso, such a virtuoso, and such a nice, kind man, Stevie was. Um, so it's just great to think about him and think about his music. So that's, yeah, just, just the sound of that word, luthier, is beautiful. A person who makes guitars, I mean, where, where, where would the world be without luthiers? Um, I'm thinking of a particular luthier um, out in uh, Colorado, Scott Baxendale, uh, who maybe he saw me play guitars on a show with the drive. I didn't play guitar with the drive by truckers, I played organ. But at some point he saw me play guitars and he saw me play different makes of guitars and decided that he could uh, make a guitar that would. Uh, take care of all my needs so I wouldn't have to pick up one guitar on a show. And he combined uh, some of these elements you're talking about. So thank, th thank God for the luthiers. I mean, even the luthiers from centuries ago who, who made the, 
the lutes in Europe. And uh, I, I'm playing it in the original key for Albert now, D flat or C sharp. Born on her bedside, been down since I began to crawl. If it wasn't for bad luck, I wouldn't have no luck at all. Hard luck and trouble, all I want. So it's in this key, huh? Are those the chords? Thank you, everybody, for tuning in to the first installment of Booker T TV on YouTube. And thanks, thank you, Teddy, for collaborating with me and for directing it. And thank you, Nan, for filming. And thank you, Olivia, for coming up with the idea. And uh, I hope you've enjoyed this, and we'll see you next time.